Hey guys, welcome to another How to Roll 20. I am the Dean of Rock. Uh, so this video, uh, we're just going to be going over some of the API that I use for my games. Um, the API uh, that I use when I'm DMing, uh, why I like it, kind of what I use it for. Um, see if it's something that you guys might be able to take advantage of and help you guys out in your games. Um, so let's jump into it. Uh, so first, we've got our game pulled up. So we're just going to go into the game settings over here. We're going to go to API scripts and get the API screen pulled up here. All right. Um, so the API that I use uh, for most of my games, these are kind of like the core API. There are other games um, where I don't use some of these uh, or maybe a couple of games where I might have one or two other API scripts um, specific to that campaign. Um, but for the most part, I use these in pretty much every game that I run. Uh, so the first one that we're going to look at is Experience Tracker. And uh, what, the reason that I use this one is it helps me track XP in the game um, without having to do a whole lot of math myself. It will automatically calculate the XP that the party gets based on the number of people in the party um, and the level that they currently are. Um, it will also track that in its own separate character sheet for me so that when the party levels up, it'll just pop up and chat level up. Um, and then that way everybody knows that it's time to, to go and level up their characters. So even if we're just doing like a milestone, um, you can still use that uh, feature. It's not as helpful when you're using milestone, obviously. Um, now what I do typically though in my games is I'll track the XP myself and just let the players know when it's time to level up. So for that I do like this. Um, the next one we're going to look at is character sheet. It's not super important, um, but it does allow the character or the players to create their own character sheets so that you don't have to do it for them. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that uh, a lot of people run into is you start a new game, you start inviting players into the game, and they join, but you're at work or on a vacation or you know whatever the case is, you can't get into Roll Twenty to assign them a character sheet. Now they have to wait on you. Um, they can't do anything, they can't start building their character until you get into the game, create a character sheet for them, and assign it to them. This way you don't have to worry about that. The player jumps in, they go into the chat, type in a command, and a character sheet is generated for them um, that they can go ahead and start editing themselves. It makes life a whole lot easier for you and for them. Next one that we're going to look at is Aura Tent Health Colors. Um, I like this one a lot because it does replace the health bar at the top of the token with just an overall aura um, that will change colors as the token loses health and change colors again as the token regains health. Um, just makes it a little bit more roleplay friendly when you're in combat uh, and less number crunchy. Um, players can't see numbers, they don't know how many hit points the enemy has. All they know is they just knocked them down from green to yellow. Okay, whatever they're doing seems to be working. And I like that. Uh, the next one is the 5th edition OGL companion. Um, there's also a, a shaped sheet companion. It just depends on which character sheet you're using for your game. Um, but what this does is it just gives you some extra API options uh, specific to the character sheets uh, with some special commands that you can use um, to, like, say, track ammo or um, track death saves automatically on the character sheet, um, things like that. And it just makes the uh, the sheet run just a little bit more smoothly for you. Uh, the last one that we're going to look at is called New Character. This is one that I do specifically. It's not in the Roll20 library. Um, but what it does is it allows you to create basically a welcome package whenever your players join the game. Um, so all you do is you just type exclamation point new in the chat console. And it will automatically roll stats for you, generate your starting wealth, your starting equipment, and then whatever welcome messages you want to put in there as well. Um, and you can edit this however you need it to look. And we'll take a look and see what it looks like once we get into the game. You guys can see exactly how that uh, pops up in the chat for them. Um, but So these are the ones that I typically use. Um, all of these on top you can find in the script library. Uh, if you just scroll through the library, you can go through, find each of them, pick them out. Um, and then the new character, you would just have to click on new script, copy and paste, and that goes in there. And I will include this in the uh, in the description. That way, you guys can have that uh, that coding. All right, 
so now that we know what API we're going to be using, let's jump into the game and we can take a look and see what that's going to look like for us. Alright, uh, so now that we are in the game, um, so we'll just kind of go in order. So the first thing that we looked at was the experience tracker. So the way that that works, uh, once you get into your game, um, when you first add it, it's going to be down here at the bottom. I always just move it up to the top. Um, so you've got your character sheet that comes with the experience tracker. And the way that that's going to work, we're just going to start it at level 1. So the players are currently at 0 XP out of 300. There are four players in the party, so we're good there. All right, and then you can you know you adjust that. If you have eight players, you put eight, obviously. Um, it's really all you need to worry about as far as the character sheet itself goes. Um, from there, there is a macro, and it looks like this. And I will also link that in the description as well. Um, so basically what the macro does is it allows you to select a token, hit the macro, and it will automatically generate the XP that that token uh, gives to the players. So for instance, this ambush drake, we're going to come over here, hit our XP macro. Boom, the party gained 100 XP for defeating the drake, giving each of them 25 XP total. Nice. Uh, then they uh, fought a Berserker, and the Berserker gave them 450 XP, bringing each individual total to 137.5 XP. So then we pull up our character sheet here, and we can see that that is automatically assigned to the character sheet. Um, so now the party is currently sitting at 137.5 out of 300 XP. Sweet, well let's keep fighting. So they fight another Berserker, and then they fight another Drake. And they fight another Berserker. Oh look, they leveled up. Sweet. And so then we pull up the character sheet. Yep, they did. They are currently at 387.5 out of 300. Well, next level is going to be 900. So you will have to change that automat or manually um, on your own. But it's one thing. It's all you have to do is just change the total. Um, everything else is tracked for you. So now they're sitting at 387.5 out of 900 XP. And they get a little message here in the chat now they know that they've leveled up they can go through and do their stuff so that's the experience tracker love it it's a lot of uh, a lot of help makes my job a lot easier uh, the next thing that we're gonna look at is the uh, the character sheet so when somebody joins the game and you're not around to assign a character sheet to them all they do is they jump into the chat box they type in char sheet hit enter, boom. A character sheet is generated for them. It will appear at the bottom of their journal tab. So then you can just pull it up to wherever and they can start editing that however they need to. It's automatically assigned to them and editable by them. All right, so the next one that we're gonna look at, um, we'll just go ahead and do the uh, or tent health colors. I think it was the next one on the list. So. Uh, the ambush drake takes some damage, so as far as the players are concerned, they can't see these health bars. Um, if we switch over to the player view... Okay, so in the player view, uh, you can see that they cannot, the players cannot see the uh, health bars at the top, so they don't know how much health each token has. All they know is that it's currently green, so it's healthy. Healthy and hearty, ready to go. Um, so that's what it looks like from the player perspective. This is why I like it, um, because again, it takes away the number crunch away from the game, um, from the player's decision making. So now it's just, hey, we have a healthy enemy, let's throw some stuff at it, see what happens. As opposed to, hey, we that enemy has 10 hit points, okay, I can use this attack and knock it down with one hit. Or, hey, if we do this, followed by that, and follow it up with this, then, you know, we can knock down the guy from 50 you know, HP to whatever. Um, he might have 2 HP, he might have 200. Players have no idea, and that's what I like about it. Uh, it keeps it more roleplay driven and less number crunchy. So let's jump back over to the GM layer. Alright, and so now that we're back in our GM view, um, so just to kind of show you how the aura works, so 
as soon as the token starts taking damage, the aura will change. So, let's say they take four points of damage, right? All right, well, they didn't make that big of a dent. Okay, well, what about another five? Whoa, not negative five. <laughs> let's put them at 20. Let's go with another five, okay. And if you look at the auras next to each other, you can kind of see how the changes color as the token health diminishes. So one of the things I do like about it is when it takes damage, it does a little blood splatter. Just a little animation. It's not really game breaking or game changing, but it's fun to watch. Um, now also, likewise, whenever they gain health, there's a little like green splatter, there it is, little green splatter that kind of pops up. And you can see that, you know, as they regain health, their aura changes back from red uh, and makes its way back up to green. Um, so that's what I like about the aura. That's what people see. Uh, that's what your players see. They just see that color change. They see the little blood splatter and it start to drop. Or they see the green aura uh, or the little green burst and the aura change back up toward green um, as the token heals itself. So that's the health uh, aura tint colors. That's it's a lot of fun. Like I said, it's basically just there to get rid of some of the number crunch on the player's end and help promote the roleplay. Um, that's why I use it, and it seems to be really successful there. All right, uh, let's see. Moving on, we had the new character. So let's do new. And that was the, the one that we had to manually add into the sandbox. Um, so we just do exclamation point new, hit enter. It has rolled three groups of stats, and this is how I do my games. Um, is you roll three stat groups, you pick the best one. Now in this game in particular, the rule set is a little bit more difficult. Um, so there are some special rules there. But it does help you illustrate, so you can leave little messages. So kind of instructions, what to do. Um, and then starting wealth, starting equipment, um, you know, what your starting level is, all of that. You can add all of that in. You can take any of this out, um, or you can add new uh, stuff to it if your character creation is more in-depth. Um, but again, it just allows the characters, or I'm sorry, the players to create their characters without you necessarily having to be there uh, to monitor every little thing. Um, that way, if you're at work or if you have a social life outside of running D&D, &D, you can enjoy that without your players blowing up your phone all the time. So, that is how that works. And I believe that's all the API that we use. There, so there was the 5e OGL companion. Um, and basically, if we just pull up a character sheet, and this is just a bogus character that I made, um, so there are different things like ammo tracking, you can turn that on, um, exhaustion tracking, I like having that on. Um, whenever you go into the uh, the API, it does have the, remember at the beginning of the video, we were in the API screen and we clicked on the uh, 5e OGL uh, and it had all the, the commands right there. So you can get the special commands for specific things that you're wanting to turn on and off. The big thing that I like it for is the ammo tracking and the exhaustion though because um, it just adds it to the character sheet like what their exhaustion level is and it kinda tracks that for them um, but then also with their uh, ammo so as they make bow attacks and things like that it'll track how many shots they've made and how many arrows they have left and that's what that does. Alright, and I believe that is all of the API that we use, or at least that I use in most of my games, so hope this was helpful, hope this gave you guys some some extra tools to use, and uh, hope, it, hope it helps and it benefits you. Alright, uh, special shout out to Brandon for asking me to make this video. Um, so thanks for the, for the comments, uh, always appreciate comments, guys. Uh, anytime 
Uh, if there's something that you want to see, I will gladly hop on and make a video for it. Um, if there's anything that I leave out of a video or something that I got wrong, please feel free to correct me um, so that I can make those adjustments. Well, have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your, your weekend or weekday or whatever it is when you're watching this. And have fun. Bye-bye.